So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, why you should still buy the iPhone 13. The current price point of the 13 still comes in at a $7.99 price point. If you buy it unlocked, it's going to be $8.29. Now the first reason I want to talk about, we already know all the specs, I've covered this multiple times, this device in terms of just kind of reviews, I want to tell you the specs on this are not going to be that much off from the iPhone 14. Apple's going to throw their bigger specs on the Pro models and of course they'll make the 14 better. They're not just going to make the phone not better or there would be no incentive for anybody really to buy it over the 13. But just like this year with the iPhone 12, how we had the iPhone 13 and the 12 being kind of similar, you could still get a pretty good deal on the 12, still a 5G phone here. I do believe that the iPhone 13 and the 14 are going to remain similar. What is neat about the upcoming 14 is that they're going to extend the size and give you a 14 max. So if you're looking for kind of the entry level iPhone, but you also want the kind of the bigger version of max, but you don't want to go all out on the pro price on the max, you might want to consider waiting. But for the rest of you, there's something about this. The 6.1 inch size is just not going away. You're going to see it again this year at 6.1 inches. It's a really good sweet spot and Apple's been creating it for a few years now. So I don't think they're gonna go away from the 6.1 inch size. And if you need an iPhone now, you could simply get it right now. The next thing is that the display was a fantastic upgrade in terms of brightness. We have 800 nits and this actually feels similar to that of an iPhone 11 Pro or even a 12 Pro in terms of display. So the display value here, OLED is brighter and more colorful iPhone 11. It's brighter and more colorful, well, similar color to the 12, but just overall a solid display upgrade. If you're looking for 120 Hertz, I wouldn't hold my breath. I don't think you're gonna see it on the 14. I could be wrong. I don't see Apple putting 120 Hertz on all four iPhones, but I would love for them to prove me wrong. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But even at 60 Hertz, I never really think about it until I actually play with the 120 Hertz and I'm reminded, oh yeah, I missed that a little bit. It's definitely nice. But at the end of the day, iOS is so smooth. Even some 120 Hertz Android phones cannot perform as smooth as the iPhone 13, even on its slower 60 Hertz refresh rate. The next reason to consider the iPhone 13 is that the software will take you all the way through at least past 2025. It's going to take you into 2026. So if you buy it now, you're still going to get a super long amount of software support. Now, of course, 14 in September will give you one more extra year. But if you need the iPhone now because you broke your phone or you just don't want to wait, this is definitely going to take you through several more years to come all the way until 2026 at minimum. So very good here. And that brings me on to my next thing. I keep thinking about performance because one of the key things that people like to bring up and I talked about a little bit earlier, but is just having that six gigs of RAM, that 120 Hertz display, that ProMotion adaptive refresh thing on the iPhone 13 Pro. But I'm constantly reminded when I use a 13 with the A15 Bionic clocked in at 3.23 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, iOS 15.5. Why did I pay $500 more than this phone? Um, it's kind of hard to justify that because the 13 does fantastic in this area as well. It's unbelievably fast. I mean, you're missing the 120 Hertz, but you're gaining great performance still. And you don't have to worry about when you switch over here to low power mode, well, it's actually not in here, but when you switch over here to low power mode and battery settings, you don't have to worry about the iPhone kind of switching from back to the 60 Hertz display. You can kind of use it the same way on the iPhone 13 and take advantage of that. Whereas on the 13 Pro, when you switch to the low power mode, it turns off the you know 120 Hertz, obviously to save battery life. Not happening here on the iPhone 13. So overall, pretty good in terms of performance, actually very good. It's super fast, faster than most Android phones out there as well. Now we touched on the low power mode, but the battery life in general has been a stunner on this phone. It's It's been a boss. So easily making it through a day. And I don't mean just like I said in my 10R video a month ago or a few weeks ago. I mean, this phone right here, just not even trying. You could run it full blast most of the day and you're probably gonna make it. Even if you get down in the teens, you're probably gonna make it through the full day provided that you charge it to 100%. You're gonna make it all day. So battery life, easy. 
not even trying, it's easy to get through a day on this phone. Several hours of screen time, somewhere around seven to eight. In my experience, I get like nine to like 10 on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but seven, eight, I'll take it. It's really strong and you could still use the 5G on this phone and still get that good battery life. It's strong. And so those decisions for Apple to not put you know, the extra 120 Hertz on here, stuff like that, I think has helped it. It actually probably has made the battery life a little bit better, not having as many pixels as something like a, you know, 2K display or something like that, or even higher. It's, it's probably helped it a little bit. So definitely this phone has really good battery life. Quickly touching on the camera, I feel like everybody knows how great the iPhone cameras are now, so it's not really much to speak about. The cinematic modes, the video modes, it's stunning how good the camera is on this phone, considering you don't have to go to the pro phone. Like it's almost like, it's actually like better than the older pro phones. It's an incredible deal, you know, for the camera alone. A lot of people argue that this price point is too high, but at the same time, you're getting a phone that has a better camera than their X pro line. Like their iPhone 11 Pro, it's better than that camera. And that camera phone was gonna run you over a thousand bucks. So the value is here, especially if you take advantage of it. You have the cinematic mode on here. You have 4K 60 video on the front, just like the iPhone 11 that introduced this. On the rear, you can do HDR video. I mean, this thing is ridiculous. I don't even have to touch my iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max. My only and big complaint with this phone is the zoom. It's pretty bad. It only goes up to 5X. And when you need that zoom, you know you need it. You'll be in a concert, you'll be somewhere, and this phone just looks super noisy at the zoom. It just lets you down. So if you love zooming or you do things that require zoom, this phone is gonna disappoint you. But if you back it out, you like to do wide angle, you do video, you do a lot of up close stuff, this one will just be just fine. Again, it doesn't have the macro mode, doesn't have a dedicated macro mode, but you could just take the shot and crop in Overall, I'm really happy. This is, you could actually call this almost a pro camera right here because you can definitely do pro like things even on the iPhone 13. So at the end of the day, a lot of people watching this video probably don't agree because it's so close to not purchase this phone, but I didn't make this video for those of you who always wanna be on the latest and greatest. I made this video for those of you looking to buy the 13 right now and wondering, is this still a safe buy? And the answer is absolutely yes. Based on my experience, the multiple beautiful color options, 5G, great cameras, long battery life. I see this staying in the lineup for a couple more years. So if you wanted to pick one up now, not a bad idea. If you want to save money though, it's a bad idea because in a couple months this will drop a little bit but there's still many reasons why you should still buy the iPhone 13 to this day. So that's gonna wrap it up here. Let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 13. Do you think I'm justified here? Do you think I should just recommend everybody to just wait? Do you have an iPhone 13? Have you been impressed? Do you love it? Do you dislike it? Are you ready for an upgrade? Do you already get rid of it? Do you think the S22 is better? Let's discuss it down below in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.